everybody, man. It's your boy JK, man. It is Thursday. See, you already know what it is. It's Tackle Thursday with JK live on IG, live on Facebook, and I'm recording from a YouTube channel. YouTube channel is Jeremy Kellum slash Winpack Now slash win man y'all go ahead and subscribe you can catch all the the latest and the uh you know content i posted out you can catch the 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 taco thursdays the replays on here this particular taco thursday will be posted next week um on my my youtube channel man but uh, i appreciate y'all getting on man um thank y'all if y'all new to taco thursday every single thursday i'm tackling a topic um, I might be tackling it with myself. I might have a guest like I did last week. I had a, a special guest, my former teammate, Arnest Eichner, um, former professional football player. Uh, now is the CEO of Light It Up Fitness, man. He was on last week, man. So y'all go check out that video on my YouTube channel right now. Uh, and But today, today we tackling a whole new and different topic, man. Today we tackling the topic, don't let the results trick you. Don't let the results trick you, man. And I had an opportunity and I got a big, you know, a big announcement coming up as far as, you know, uh, me being able to do some things weekly, just like I do Taco Thursday, but having another platform to be able to do similar um, things. Um, so I'll be probably dropping that, making that announcement this upcoming week, man. So God has been good. He's always good whether I got the opportunity or not. Um, but definitely, uh, he blessed me with this opportunity. Um, I did it this past, I uh, did it yesterday. Um, and, and, and I talked about uh, the topic, don't let the results trick you, right? And, and man, we live in a world where results seem to be everything, right? It, it, how many followers you got? How many likes? How many streams? How many, you know what I'm saying? How many people rocking with you? How many sales you getting, right? Um, results, what's your test scores? All of these things, we are living in a results driven and results oriented world and and and, and to a certain extent i i see why we need results why we and, and results are important and I, and I see why we're results driven and results oriented right i understand that however i believe sometimes though we can give results too much power in our lives right um to where results can end up becoming unhealthy uh depending on how we use them or how we allow them to impact us right and and, and so what i mean by that is that hey of course like i believe wholeheartedly that results should be used as a gauging tool a gauging tool right in other words results should tell us a hey, how good we did um results should be able to let us know okay i improved in this area this area i need to work on i did good over here i did i need to do better over here right results should be a gauging tool when we allow results to be a gauging tool oh i made this amount of money this week or oh okay man i made improvements or man maybe this month might have been a last uh, a down month or results oh how many people got on the live hey, i got more people on this week live i got more people on next week live or whatever on different topics i get more or less right the the results should be a gauging tool it should let me know or let you know where you stand good or bad how, things you did well things you need to improve on right but what we i believe including myself what we make the mistake is with results is that we sometimes or many times we allow results to be a defining tool for us. We use results as a defining tool. And the thing when we give that type of power to results, when we allow results to be a defining tool, right? We then allow results to have the final say about who we are. Or we have, we, or, 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 or when we allow results to have the uh, to be a defining tool, we allow then allow results to have the final say about our business. We then allow results to have the final say about who we are. We have we then allow results to have the final say about about our work ethic. When we allow results to be the defining tool, and this is where 
As humans, this is where we come to a pain point. This is where we come to frustration and, 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 and disappointment. And, 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 and even on the flip side of that, this is how we could become arrogant. We could become conceited, right? When we give too much power to results and we allow results to be a defining tool, right? And we allow results to have the final say about who we are or about our work ethic, right? And the, and the danger with allowing results to be a defining tool, the, with the, da the danger uh, of, of letting results define who we are or what our business is, is that results can have us thinking that we're way better than we really are. Results can have us thinking that we're not doing as good as we really are. So, so, so positively or negatively, if we allow results to define us, we could walk away. You could have some results, some good results, and you walk away and you're conceited. You're like, oh, man, I'm killing them. And maybe you're not really doing as good as the results are making you believe. But then on the flip side, if we allow results to be a defining tool, we could look at results and we could beat ourselves up because we're like, man, you know, I didn't get that many sales or, or I suck at this. I'm not doing good at this. Just solely off the results. And the results can have you looking at yourself less than how you really should see yourself, right? It's, it's, it's similar to me being a teacher, right? I, I might ask a scholar, I might say, hey, how you doing in school? And the scholar said, man, I got straight A's. And immediately I'm like, man, keep up the good work. Just solely off of results, I, I define that scholar. I'm like, I, I, I automatically assume because he or she tells me they got straight A's, I automatically assume that, hey, you keep up the good work. You're already, you, you're doing great work. I assume that based off the results. And then on the flip side, when I ask another scholar, how you doing? And they're like, man, you know, I got straight C's. Immediately I say, hey, you just got to work harder. I immediately define them by their results. And I immediately assume that just because their results are or is straight A's, I mean straight C's, I automatically think that, hey, you're not working hard enough. But 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 the, the mistake that I could be making is that, hey, I'm thinking that the a straight C student is, is not working hard enough, but, but the straight C student studies two hours every night. And then the straight A student, who I assume works hard based off the results, they never study at all. They're just innately, they're just uh, 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 intellectually talented or intellectually um, gifted. Right. So they're not doing any studying. They're not doing any practicing. They're not putting any extra work in. But the results is that they're getting straight A's, right? And so here I am, or even as parents, you might be defining your child based off the results, thinking that they're not working hard because the, because the results don't line up to how or what you think they should line up to, right? But, but, but the results don't always tell the whole story. And that's why results should be a gauging tool, not a defining tool, right? Because think about it. The scholar that, that has straight A's, Without studying, what are those, if those results are a get or are a defining tool, what is that telling the scholar? That's telling the scholar, look, man, I can, I can, man, I can do this. Like I can get straight A's without putting hard work in, right? It, it's, it's, it's tricking and, and manipulating that, that scholar to think that I can get away and I can get great results without working hard, right? And then what does that do to the C student? The, what does the, the, the C student think? He, he or she is working hard. They're studying two hours a night and still the results are straight C's. And maybe that's the best that they can do. But a scholar, if the scholar allows the straight C's to define who they are, then that scholar could walk away and feel defeated. That scholar could walk away and feel inferior. Why? Because they're allowing, they're allowing the results to define them, right? Same, same thing like me, right? Me and my wife, we're coming up on six years of marriage. I could look at those results. That's to me, thank the Lord, that's a blessing, right? But I could look at those, this six years of marriage and say, man, we made, we made it in six years. I can look at it as, as those results as being a defining tool or a gauging tool. If I'm looking at making it six years of marriage as a defining tool, I'm like, I'm kicking my feet up. Like, boy, I didn't made it six years. Like, boy, I'm good. Hey, I'm good. I don't need no more work as a husband. I'm good. I didn't made it six years. I'm good, right? If I'm allowing those results to be a defining tool, I could become conceited. I could become arrogant, which would then make my marriage suffer, right? I would suffer. I won't be uh, the best husband I can be. But if I'm looking at the results of making it six years of marriage 
as a gauging tool, then I'm looking like, I'm like, okay, man, I thank you, Lord, for, you know, blessing me to be, make it to six years. Um, you know, I thank you for the success, but I still got some areas, right, that I need to improve, that I need to get better at, right? So, so it's so important for us to make sure that, that we look at results and we use it as a gauging tool and not a defining tool. Because like I said, when we use results as a defining tool, we walk around and, 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 and we can either become more arrogant than, we, than we're supposed to be, more conceited than we're supposed to be, or we can walk around with an inferior complex. We can walk around thinking that we're not good enough, simply solely based off results, right? And and this is the thing, what, like we live in a world that's fixated and that's fascinated with results, right? And the crazy thing is, is that we as humans, we can't, we don't control the results. I know we want to control the results, but we don't control the results at all. We got no control over the results, right? And the reason why I say that is because I used to be a person that, that thought that I could control the results. Literally, when I was in college, I thought that, okay, my goal was I want to lead the nation in interceptions, right? I wanted to win the Thorpe Award. And I thought that just because I worked on catching the ball out of pra after practice, that will automatically make me lead the nation in picks because I was putting the work in. I thought that the results that I wanted was going to automatically happen, right? And I remember my coach, man. Shout out to Coach Bobby, man, and the whole Bobby family. Um, I remember my coach telling me, he said, Jeremy, he said, hard work doesn't guarantee success. He said, Hard work gives you the opportunity to be successful, right? So in other words, my coach was telling me, he was like, yo, Jeremy, like, yeah, we all want certain types of success and we want certain types of results, but, but, but there's no guarantee that we'll get it. But if you, if you work hard, you will align yourself to give yourself an opportunity to get those results you want, right? But if you don't work hard at all, then you don't have an opportunity to even be in a line to get those results, right? But even more so, the Bible says, and see, a lot of people, you know, this is something they glaze over, or they don't even really look at what the Bible, you know what I'm saying, that what the Bible uh, talk about hard work or, or just about financial gain and different things like that. The Bible, Proverbs 14, 23, check it out. It says, all hard work brings a profit. I'm gonna say it again. Proverbs 14, 23, all hard work brings a profit. So in other words, right, it's, it's the Bible is letting us know, reassuring us that if you work hard, if you grind, if you do the things that, that you know you should do and continue to grow and continue to develop and work hard, you will reap, you will see, you will reach and get a profit, right? So, so, so you can rest assured, as long as you're working hard, you're going to see a profit. You're going to get better. And whatever you're working at, as long as you do it, you're going to get better. You're going to improve. You're going to see a profit. The thing that the Bible does not say is that it says, it does not say that we will get the profit that we want. It does not say what type of profit it will be. But it says that if you work hard, you will get a profit. It will bring forth a profit. And the thing is, as humans, right, I'm pretty sure that I know I can, I'm pretty sure you can as well. You can attest to the fact that you have worked so hard, right, in life at certain things and you got exactly what you worked hard for. So if you were a student, you might have got straight A's. Or if you worked hard to study or pass the ACT, you might have got 21 and above, right? You might have got exactly what you wanted. Then there are times, right, that we work hard and then not only do we get the profit that we exactly wanted, but we got, God blesses us with more than what we ever could have imagined. So not only did, did, did uh, you, you be able to get your business that you wanted, but your business do numbers that, that exponentially greater than what you thought. So God blesses you with a profit that goes greater than you ever could imagine. But then there are times when we work our tail off, we give it all we got, and guess what happened? We get a profit that is not what we actually wanted. 
It's actually less than the profit that we wanted. It's actually less than the results that we wanted, right? And I'm here to say that you can put the same hard work in year after year, and guess what? Every year your results can be different, right? Because guess what? We're not in control of the results. And I, and I, and I say that because I have experienced it. I remember being in college, man, and I remember uh, Coach Diaz, man, the head coach at the University of Miami. He, he gave us an article, the defense, in my sophomore year, it was in camp, fall camp. He gave us an article. He said, it, and I was reading it, it was like, man, Ed Reed works on his hands every single day after practice, right? And I'm like, man, like, you know, Ed Reed, my boy, like, he, he from the U, that's my favorite team. He rocking 20, I'm rocking 20. I'm like, I, I'm like, man, if I'm going to be better or want to even get on, you know, that level, I, I got to work on my hands like a receiver at the practice as well, right? And, 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 and so from that moment, the time I read that article, my sophomore year in college at MT, every day at the practice, boom, boom, I'm catching balls, boom, boom. I'm talking about in the summer, my boy Brad, meet me at the stadium, boom, boom. Uh, in, in, in spring, tra you know, uh, uh, mat drills, the whole nine, boom, boom. Catching balls, catching balls. And guess what? It only one year it yielded me two interceptions. That work ethic, right? One year it yielded me three interceptions. And then the next year it yielded me two interceptions, right? The same work ethic, right? It yielded me two interceptions, three interceptions, two interceptions, right? That wasn't the profit that I was expecting or even wanting. I, I was looking for double digit interceptions. That's why I thought I was gonna get by working hard after school, or I mean, I, after practice, catching the balls after practice, right? But guess what I did? I took that same work ethic, that same regimen, and I took it to the arena league every day after practice. Boom, catching balls, working on my hands. The first year, I got nine interceptions. My second year, eight interceptions. Third year, eight interceptions. My fourth year, 15 interceptions. Now, I didn't change anything up. The same work ethic, the same habits, the same commitment yielded different results. Sometimes I got, like, it brought forth the profit. Sometimes the profit was exactly what I wanted, right? I, I, well, it was in the middle. It was like, okay, eight, nine, okay, cool, cool, right? Sometimes the profit what, what, was, was not even what I wanted. It was less than what I wanted, you know? I got the two picks, the three picks, the two picks. But then I got a profit that blew my mind. 15 picks. So the point of what I'm saying is that I was not in control of the profit or of the results. All I was in control of was the work ethic. That's it. My boy, and I call him my boy because I follow him. You know, I haven't met. I would, you know, would like to meet him one day. Inky Johnson. He said, Inky Johnson, great motivational speaker, man. He said, which is more important? What you accomplish or who you become on the way to accomplishing it, right? And in other words, that he was like, just do the work. Don't worry about the results, just do the work. And so many times I think we get caught up with the results that we forget the work because we can't control the results. I can't. You get what I'm kind of saying? All I could do is control my work ethic. I can't control if a job hires me or not. All I can do is apply. I can put my resume in and do my best on the interview. That's it. I can't make them hire me, right? That's up to God. God that's in God's hands, not in my hands, right? If you got a, a, a company and you sell products, you can't make the people go and buy your product. You can't drag them physically in the store, take that card out of their personal wallet and, and swipe and pay for your stuff and pay for your product. You can't. Those are results. God is in control of the results. You ain't in control of the results. You in control of the work ethic. You in control of getting a nice business plan. You in control of, of making sure you, you, you got some, you know, you got nice products. You got nice content. You're a nice brand. You, you're respectable. Like, you are in control of the work, but you're not in control of the results. And so we got to understand that, right? We got to understand that. And, and, and the thing is, as, as well... And like I say, when it's a pain point, when we try to control the results, 
It's a pain point when we think that we're in control of the results. It's a pain point when we give results too much power in our lives, right? And, and, and so anytime you got pain or we experience in pain physically, emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, especially dealing with this, you want relief. And I believe relief can come with this. Always evaluate your work ethic, right? Always evaluate your work ethic. So whether it's me with Taco Thursday, I, I evaluate that. Okay, what can I be doing different? What can I do better? How can I enhance it, right? How can I enhance it? What can I do better, right? Evaluate your work ethic. Use it as a gauging tool, not as a defining tool. There have been times I got on here, a lot of people wasn't on there. On here, there have been times I uh, got on here, a lot of people's on here. I, but I'm not allowing the results to define me or define my podcast. Because I, I know who I am, I know what my podcast is, and, and, and I believe in what God has given me to do. So 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 I'm a not I'm not allowing results to define me, but I'm allowing I'm using results as a gauging tool. So you gotta make sure you evaluate your work ethic. You might it don't matter if it's a success or a failure. It don't matter if you accomplish your goal or you don't. You got to always evaluate your work ethic. Because think about it. I know you, you, you've you been in school before and you passed the test that you didn't study for. So if I pass a test that I didn't study for, I still need to evaluate my work ethic. Why? Because I need to say, man, you know what? Yeah, I got by on this time. But, but I need to do more studying if I expect to go to another level. Right? But then there are times where you study your tail off. I remember studying to, to, to get my practices, man. I mean, I felt like five PE tests. Like, and y'all think the PE test, the PE test is the hardest practice. I'm not even being biased. It's the hardest practice. It got the highest score. It's the hardest practice, right? I looked, even though I studied so hard, the results were not coming out the way. But even though the results weren't matching the way that I wanted them to match, I didn't let it define me. I didn't let me having to take multiple PE tests over and over define me and say I'm a failure. No, I just had to regroup. Oh, what could I do different? Evaluate my work ethic. And then, like I say, there are times when you're going to work your tail off and still not get the results you want. Like, and, that, and I had to learn this even like with sports is that everybody in the NBA works hard. Like for the most part, I'm saying they're putting in work to get better, right? Giannis won the championship, right? Now, I, it's no doubt in my mind, the way Giannis is, he works hard every year, right? And every year, one year, it, it yielded an MVP. His work ethic yielded an MVP. Another year, his, his, his work ethic yielded an uh, MVP and a defensive player of the year. And then this year, he wasn't, his work ethic... He didn't get the MVP. Guess what? He got a championship. But he's putting in the same work. He got the same work ethic and it yielded different results. So just because you don't win at something does not mean you didn't work hard. And just because you do win at something does not mean you worked hard enough. At the end of the day, man, we're not in control of the results. We're in, we're in control of our, we are in control of our work ethic. So therefore, control what you can control, which is your work ethic. Let God take care of the results. Because you, you, you can't control the results. And when we try to control the results, when we try to make things happen the exact way that we want, and we think that we're in control, all that's going to do is just bring frustration. It's going to bring frustration to us. It, 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 cause us to to really go through some intellectual psychological pain because we thinking that we're more powerful than we really are and, we, and we're not the results are out of our hands all we can do is work hard the work ethic and and, and i think when we understand that we're not in control of our results it allows us i believe to work to walk in humility and when we when we think that we're in control of our results, it it causes it can cause us to walk in arrogance because you think that you're the one that's doing it, and 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 that and that's what's crazy. Like 
I look at my success as a football player, as a professional football player, and I don't kid myself, right? I know that there are people in my hometown, at my crib, that could have played in arena and did what I did. Um, just like I believe I could have played in the NFL and, and had success, right? I know people could have played in an arena like me and had success. So I understand that me being where I am isn't really because I'm just this magnificent of a person or this magnificent of an athlete. I'm not. It's all really by the grace of God at the end of the day because I'm not going to say I, I believe I worked hard. Yeah, I believe I, I'm a hard worker. I'm not going to say I, I work. I'm, I'm the hardest worker ever in the world. No. There are some people that I know that work that that work ethic is it could is better than mine, but maybe they didn't get to the level that I was blessed to get to. So at the end of the day, I'm not in control of the results. I wasn't in control ultimately of making it to the arena. I put the work in and 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 the I wanted to go to the I wanted to go to the NFL. That's the profit that I wanted out of my hard work. But out of my hard work, yielded, right? By the grace of God, it yielded the arena football league. That was my profit. Those are my results. So that 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 really is what it is. It, you know what I'm saying? When you really, really look at it, man. And so um don't want to talk, you know, everybody ear off. Uh man, I uh definitely, you know, anybody got any um, you know, questions. Feel free to drop them in the chat, um, you know, as we transition uh, to the tell them, kill them uh, portion of the segment. Uh, so, man, if you're just getting on, all right, we just transition to the tell them, kill them portion of the segment. Probably got about two, three more minutes. How you doing, Miss Green? What's up? How you doing? Hope all is well. See that football season getting closer. So I'm definitely excited about that, man. But, uh, but definitely, man, just feel free, man, drop in the chat. Uh, whatever it is, you know, we can talk about um, don't not letting the results trick you. Um, we can talk about, you know, this upcoming football season. Um, and the boys getting paid. Uh, you know, now college athletes with the NIL. Uh, we can talk about, you know, teams trying to go to the SEC. We can talk about life in general, fatherhood. Um, man, relationships, parenting, the whole nine. Um, any question, man, y'all got for me, man, feel free. Uh, the drop in the comment section. Uh, that's good, Miss Green. Glad to hear that. Um, and, you know, feel free to drop that in the chat, man. So I'll probably give it about a minute or so. See if anybody got any questions, comments. And, and we will sign off, you know, after that, man. So probably give about 45 seconds. Uh, feel free. Like I say, man, ask any question that you, f you desire to ask. Let me check over here. See if I got uh, any questions. Any questions over here? Um. Uh, okay. Oh, that's a good one right here. All right, Miss Green said, "How do I feel about the athletes getting vaccinated?" Um. Personally, I believe that uh the player should get vaccinated um i don't know if this could lead to athletes as well um but I, I i've been hearing about the nfl some you know different players speaking out um but i i personally believe i personally believe that um all athletes uh should should get vaccinated um and the reason why and i just think all everybody in general you know what i'm saying um should get vaccinated and you know i know me and my wife and um family uh has right and so that's my personal belief but i think even so you know especially with athletics because it's so it's close contact so we if you want to talk about football that's about to start up i think that football players need to be get vaccinated because um you know uh and, and to your point especially the collegiate athletes because it's a whole different environment than being a pro um being in college one, you're around the general population. So kids, are, they're gonna be going back to school in person now. Um, it's gonna be a lot of touching surfaces, opening doors. Um, you know, we're gonna 
we go, I don't know what the mask mandate is on campus or whatever the case may be, but it's going to be way more interaction than it was last year. Um, with that being said, you're still playing football, so you're still in the locker room, um, you know, which is a closed, enclosed area. Yes, is is ventilated and everything like that, um, but it's still, it's still a lot of contact. Then you're talking about tackle, talking about football, you're talking about equipment. Um, it's just a lot of rubbing and touching uh, and breathing, face masks, you know, uh, you might get something in your mouth, you spit, and you might have residue, I know it's disgusting, but residue of of saliva on your face mask and, and you hit another player and that saliva could run in your face. It's just so many different things that I just think that at the end of the day, um, players need to get vaccinated. Um, people in general need to get vaccinated, especially if we trying to get the world back to a place where, um, you know what I'm saying, is 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 open, fully open and you don't have to be looking over your shoulder worrying um or you know experiencing you know because anxiety is real and, and 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 i feel like everybody getting vaccinated can can lessen and lower the anxiety that we all are feeling when we in different types of environments so um and rightfully so so i i think they should get vaccinated um i understand the apprehensiveness um i got friends that are apprehensive like i i, I know people co-workers that are like no nah, i'm not getting vaccinated or whatever the case may be and, and to each is his own um and then i understand especially as in the black community why we why we are uh we got reservations like we you know what i'm saying we we kind of like whoa why are you forcing this vaccine on us i get that too because when we look at uh what the tuskegee experiment uh when we look at different things even like you know me and my wife we caught up on uh we binge watched um uh, uh black lightning and and black lightning it's so crazy looking at black lightning in 2021 even though it came out years ago it's because they talking about stuff like that's going on now or that then went on in america so i understand why you know what i'm saying uh african americans why you know athletes especially you know um why we hesitant to get vaccinated um because of the history of the country um however i look at it as well as like what's the alternative though like what's the alternative to not being vaccinated you still gonna go out there and play you still gonna go out there in schools you still you know you got family members family's gonna be coming to games so you see your family before the game after the game you go play the game you run into you know you tackling you touching different players on other teams then you going back to see your family then all week long you going into classes with different kids and then you're going to practice so it's just gonna be so much contact that i just think that you know what i'm saying just to play it safe is that to to get vaccinated um you know so i, I definitely get it though because everybody is your body so you don't want nobody mandating you to take something or put something in your body um but then at the same time though to be an angel's advocate you don't got to get vaccinated but the nfl got every right to say well if you don't get vaccinated you're not gonna play or or your college got every right to say look you don't you don't got to get vaccinated but you're just not gonna play or you know you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah as a human being we got every right to say no but as an institution as a company as an organization they got every right to say these are our rules this that's those are your rules for your body these are our rules for our company um so i if i was if i was playing in college i would get vaccinated to be honest uh if i was playing you know pro ball if i was in a league or whatever I would get vaccinated. Um, that's just me personally. I think, I, like I said, I think they all should get vaccinated. But I understand why players are kind of pushing back. Like, hold on, like, yo, like, don't be forcing us on us because it makes us a little skeptical. Why are you trying to give us? Because the history has not always been on our side or shown that, you know what I'm saying, that the country really was rooting for us or wanted to do something that could help us. So, uh, but yeah, I, but that's a good question, though. Definitely. What up, Cole? Battle? What up, well, I know y'all get ready for the season. Trying to, uh, man, y hey, y'all gonna have my heart torn, man, uh, kind of first week of the season, coach. Cause y'all, y'all playing my favorite team, man. Y'all playing, y'all playing my coach, my D coordinator from MT, Manny Diaz, and my favorite college team, obviously, other than MT. Um, but you know what I'm saying? But y'all like fam, though. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know what I'm saying? A little battle out there balling. So I'm definitely going to be rooting for him too, man. So 
Man, salute. I know this is a big year, man, for y'all, man. So uh, definitely praying and hoping, man, all y'all dreams come true, man. Just, you know, as a, as a, for him, as a, as a student athlete, man. And then for y'all, man, as, as, a, as a family. Cause I just remember y'all, y'all watching y'all, man, on Facebook and stuff, man. Y'all be reminding me of uh, my parents. And even me and my mom and dad be talking about it. Like, I'm like, man, go battle them at the game. They did it. And like y'all just remind remind us of uh, us, man. They be, was at every game going crazy, and y'all on a whole different level, you know. He on a whole different level doing his thing, man. And uh, one of the top, literally, uh, a top three safety, you know what I'm saying? You know, projected. So, uh, man, salute to him, man. Salute, salute to him. I just remember him running, <laughs> running through practices uh, at, at Dillfield, man, and. And just running around, uh, but it's just crazy because you never know what your kid is going to grow up into and be and become, man. And so, salute to y'all, man, uh, for just raising great kids, man, both of them, man. So, uh, shout out to y'all, man. Appreciate you jumping on too, Coke. Uh, but, yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so so I, I would definitely I would definitely get um, vaccinated, especially the college athletes. I think all college students should get vaccinated. Uh, and I heard some institutions saying you you can't come back into in person class if you're not vaccinated. So I I even heard them um, pitching that as well. But uh, but yeah, though that's a good question. Let me see. Um, if, uh, you remember me, um, JJ? Uh, yeah, man, I, I definitely remember you, bro. I for the support. Yeah, man. Um, so definitely, man. So I'm going uh, to get ready to go ahead and wrap this up, man. I appreciate y'all hopping on Taco Thursday with JK live on IG, live on Facebook, and I'm recording for, for my YouTube channel, man. So, man, if you on here, you know how to get to, to any of my content. JK underscore impacts on Instagram. Um, Jeremy Kellum on Facebook, man, my YouTube channel, uh, Jeremy Kellum slash Winpack now slash uh, win, man, and, and man, I got some big news coming up. I'm gonna drop this week, man, to where, you know, especially if you're in the Tennessee area, you'll be able to hear me not only just on live Thursday, but even on Wednesdays, you'll be able to hear me. Um, so I'm gonna uh, I'm 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 share that, man, this week, man, as I continue to gather more details with it, man. So stay tuned for that, man. Uh, man, go to my YouTube page, check out some of my other content, man, on there. I appreciate all the love and support from everybody. Man, y'all have a blessed night. Um, enjoy your Friday. Have a blessed weekend, man. Uh, continue to wake up, striving to win on purpose, be intentional about winning, and make sure that you do not let the results trick you. Use results as a gauging tool. Let your the results, look at them and say, okay, this is what I got better in. This is what I need to improve in. This is the things I did good in. These are the things that I didn't do so well in, right? Make sure that you're using results as a gauging tool, not a defining tool. Don't let results define you as a person, as a company, as a relationship, as, as, a, as a business. Don't let your results define you. Just use them as a gauging tool, all right? Y'all have a blessed day. Appreciate that, Miss Green. And yes, go Blue Raiders, all right? I'm going to holler at y'all.